Why the populist dialogues? Populism was a product of an economic system which drove the American people into either greater wealth or abject poverty. From 1873 until 1893, America experienced a devastating economic crisis characterized by falling farm prices and massive urban unemployment. As the poor cotton farmers of East Texas and the South searched for a way out of their poverty, they identified the source of their conditions as the railroads and the East Coast banks. The farmers began to develop a system of farming co-ops and banking mechanisms independent of these powerful institutions. While creating the new systems, the populists advocated for structural changes to the political system. They realized that neither two political parties, Republicans in the North and Democrats in the South, served them. The two parties were entrenched with the railroads and the banks. A third party was needed that united black, white, and red, as well as urban factory workers with rural farmers. Thus the People's Party, known as the Populists, were born. Our program is called the Populist Dialogues because we identified with these early populists, the principal cause of today's economic, social, environmental, and political problems is the corporate takeover of our democracy. Corporate dominance has eliminated most of our democratic institutions. Most importantly, the American people's active participation in our decision-making processes. Our program's purpose is to inform our audience of the current populist solutions to these problems. We promote true populist ideas and ideals, unlike phony populists who identify government as the source of their oppression and use wedge issues to divide the poor, working class, and the middle class. Welcome to the Alliance for Democracies, the Populist Dialogues. My name is David Delk, and I host this series of half-hour weekly cable like, access programs produced here at the studios of Portland Community Media in Portland, Oregon. Today, our guest is Nancy Mattella. Nancy Mattella is a member of the Alliance for Democracy. She's a citizen activist. She's worked on election integrity issues in the past. She is also working on water issues, specifically the, the right to water. Uh, with the Alliance for Democracy. She's also worked on a related issue with regard to the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. So uh, welcome to the program, Nancy. Thank you, David. Great, good, good to, good to have you here. I we should have had you here long ago, but uh, time marches on rather quickly. Mm. So, uh, so welcome Thank to the you. show. So uh, before we get on to the main focus of why you're here about the water, tell us a little bit about what you did about election integrity. Mm. Uh, I had started working on water issues uh, in the early 2000s, but uh, when the 2004 election happened, uh, there were a number of us that were pretty upset about uh, the results and felt like uh, there was maybe some hanky-panky going on nationwide uh, with those elections. And we pretty quickly realized when we investigated it that we could only influence Oregon, we couldn't influence the nation. And so we had a group called the Oregon Voter Rights Coalition and uh, worked with a lot of different people, including state legislators, to see what we could do to institute something that would help safeguard our election, um, our vote counting system. Even though we're, we are a mail-in ballot system, uh, those ballots are still fed through computers and all of us know that computers can be hacked. So uh, through our work, um, 18 months later, we had legislation passed that um, basically uh, requires an audit be done. Uh, a certain number of votes are pulled from each um, county uh, in the state and verified that the computer counted it as it was marked. So that was a little detour from my water oh. issues, but it was, was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just shows what a few dedicated citizens can do if right. they put their mind to it. Yeah, and actually that was why I wanted you to talk about that because it is, it is a case where because you and others banded together, you were able to actually um, 
affect what public policy is. Absolutely. And create a system that we can actually have some trust in. So Absolutely. Right. We kind of surprised ourselves even. Uh -huh. It was a lot of hard work, but um, spread out over about a dozen and a half people, um, all, you know, uh -huh. All told, we did make a difference. Okay, so. great, good, yeah. And you've been making a difference on uh, the question about Hanford also. Uh, well, I'm certainly banging the drums about it. <laughs> yes, Whether well. there's a difference, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I kind of uh, um, scare people a lot in telling them what's going on so that they will get to the to the hearings mm -hmm. and, and be heard. And sometimes we will cut the presenters off as they're trying to lead us down a path saying, you know, all is good here. And we're saying, wait a minute, it's leaking into the Columbia River. That is not good. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Right. We don't want to hear about cleaning up this remote building. We want to hear about the Columbia River and the groundwater. So I have been doing a little bit of mm -hmm. beating the drum right. around yes. that. In fact, uh, I was tabling at the Mississippi Street Fair uh, a couple weeks ago, and mm -hmm. Mayor Adams came by the booth and said hello and, and specifically said that he appreciated the work that uh, the Alliance for Democracy, primarily through you, has been doing to alert the city of Portland and keep them abreast of what's happening mm -hmm. at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation. So uh, kudos to you. Oh, thank you. And right. kudos to Mayor Adams. He actually showed up first time a city official, county or state official showed up at a hearing and said, this is ridiculous. Clean this place up and do not bring on any more nuclear waste until it is cleaned up. Mm -hmm. It was just terrific that he, he actually left a budget meeting to come for that 15 minutes to mm -hmm. be heard. Right. So great. it's been great. Good, great, yeah. So what we want to talk about today is about water and specifically about the potential for it to be privatized, focusing on Oregon. So one of the well, let's just talk about first, what does privatization of water mean?